Hello, this is the version 7.2 release training for Forecast Builder. And in today's presentation, we are going to discuss some of the highlights for version 7.2, which include GUI changes, some tool cleanup, talk about some memory enhancements, fixed dry thunder, adjustments to the QPF consistency check, and fixed the switch in a probability of coverage for several items, such as thunder, flurries, and sprinkles. So one of the first things that you will see with Forecast Builder is when you run the Foundation Grid Step. Foundation Grid Step previously would list a whole ton of items that you could populate covering many different service programs. Including all these various options resulted in the GUI becoming so large that it, from top to bottom that it could almost run off the screen. Given this, it was evident that we needed to change the GUI some. So when we look at the GUI now, you will see that each service program is separated into its individual section in the Foundation Grids GUI. This should also make it a little cleaner for you to decide which elements you would like to initialize. This is just an example, again, if the uh, top-down is the configure precipitation type method. Recall there are several different precipitation type methods that you can utilize with Forecast Builder. Also referencing back to the Foundation Step GUI here, um, you will notice that one particular element here with QPF is now changed um, to QPF 06. And the reason behind this is that while many offices create QPF grids in six hourly um, you know, hard-coded time blocks, some offices do one hourly QPF blocks. And this is to help separate those between the six hourly and the one hourly. So in this case, for those office, for most offices, just treat this QPF 06 as QPF. And for those offices that do one hour QPF, you'll see QPF 01 and just treat that as your QPF grid. Another feature with Forecast, forecast Builder version 7.2 is now the About menu has, uh, has been added which allows you to see what version numbers each portion of Forecast Builder or Hazard Builder are. And in fact, the version number has also been displayed at the top of the GUI. And this is to help mainly with support in, in case that there are some problems. The technical support team can easily identify then which Forecast Builder version you are using. Another GUI change is the Aviation Finalize step. There is now a prompt um, at this step to decide whether or not you would like to finalize the aviation grids. And by default, um, this will be no, except for the TAF period where that will be set as yes, um, if you chose like say the 18Z TAF period, just for an example. The configuration of then what checks that fi Aviation Finalize will perform can be done through the Forecast Builder config file. So one of the things that we've had with Forecast Builder for many, many versions has been a whole lot of tools. Uh, with, this tool with this release, we are cleaning up a lot of them um, in preparation for Python 3 migration, which is our game plan for probably with version 7.3. And so here's a list of several of the things that will be removed. Um, we've got a lot of probability of weather type procedures and tools, and they've been completely integrated into Forecast Builder. Um, there's only two that remain, pot, probably are the pot, valley fog, and pot marine fog. And configuration of those can, configuration can be done right in those tools, and that's listed in the install instructions. There was a whole bunch of old related procedures and utilities for Forecast Builder in the event that version 7 didn't work, well, Forecast, version, Forecast Builder version 7 has passed, so we've now decided to remove those old procedures. And also, the Forecast Builder fire weather procedure is being removed since there's some incompatibility issues with 7.2 and the fact that Forecast Builder version 7 has fire weather directly incorporated. Refer to the configuration instructions on how to make your Forecast Builder able to do fire weather. The next topic to discuss is the QPF consistency check. 
So with Forecast Builder version 7.1 and prior, we've had this QPF versus POP check applied on both population and DERN finalize. And the QPF check is listed there as follows. But with version 7.2, there's a couple of changes. The first is a QPF versus POP check will only occur during finalize. And additionally, with the QPF check, the QPF will equal zero only where the POP equals zero. Previously, it was where POP is less than 15. And there's a couple of reasons behind this. The first is the NDFD integrity check um, per directive 10-201 is exactly written as so. And the QPF equals zero where POP equals zero. Also, this gets it more in line with the ZFP directive, which allows a weather mention around 10 POP. Um, again, previously we had 15. And additionally, this will make your QPF more conditional based on your, based on your POP versus your weather. The QPF greater than or equals 0 0.01 where POP's greater than 45 stays the same in both versions. I should note that the with Forecast Builder 7.2, this change to the QPF, change, uh, QPF check will also help offices utilizing WPC for QPF because in these scenarios where you're utilizing WPC for QPF and Forecast Builder is populating MBM for POP, this will help so that you don't end up with several hundreds of WPC QPF, QPF all of a sudden cut off right at the that POP was. POP 15 threshold that was previously in version 7.1. Another new item here for Forecast Builder is a precipitating accumulation grid called rain amount. The concept behind this was to help during mixed precipitation events, uh, as QPF can be in many forms. And this whole grid is going to be derived automatically during the precipitation accumulation step. And you know, and no effort on your part, it will just create uh, and I've got an example here from Lacrosse of how it's how it's utilized. So here's your like your storm total QPF grid for over some couple days for an event. And here you have an expected snowfall, but this is an event where not all that QPF is going to go into snow. You're going to have some of it go to rain, and so now you have the rain amount grid, which you can display here as a snow as a storm total rainfall and so you can kind of see that separation there between the snowfall and the rainfall and that can help especially in uh, in hydrology to figure out how much liquid precipitation could go in, into rivers talk about dry thunder here we've I've got a lot of stuff on the screen um, simply stated here again version 7.2 allows configuration for dry thunder um, defaulted to enabled for Western region and disabled elsewhere. So if you do find yourself in an environment favorable for dry thunder, you may end up having to go into the configuration um, to help turn it on. Uh, and then there's just a part in the non-precipitation uh, step, step five, that allows you to, um, to, to create or populate from MBM and then uh, shows up there as a dry out attribute for thunder into your into your grids and there's actually some more configuration regarding that and there's also some automatic QC in there um, to help separate where dry thunder and thunder would be applied in your grid considering that there can be instances where you have portion of your CWA experience in dry thunderstorms and a more heavier QPF case of this in, in the in this case, maybe more than a tenth of an inch occurring, so you result in a thunder over your other portion of your CWA. And finally, this only applies to Western region sites. It's a sky pop consistency check, and this was due to their regional RLC agreement to be able to use forecast building. The extended essentially allows the, the pop and sky to be some semi-consistent um, you, have sent, you can see the curve there that as your pop increases, so does your sky at a certain, at a certain curve. And this was the algorithm employed from WFO Boise. And that's it for this presentation. If you'd like to learn more about Forecast Builder or you have questions, there's our VLAB site. You can email that address, nws.forecastbuilder.noaa.gov. 
or feel free to post a note in the Forecast Builder NWS chat room. Thank you.